Now, yesterday I did a video called Did Africa's Communalism Hinder Its Development? which went down uh, interestingly with uh, people who commented. And uh, anyway, I talked in there about how the suggestion made by Walter Rodney, influenced by Marxist uh, thinking, that Africa's communalistic egalitarianism, while being perfectly suited to the, to the environment um, in Africa, meant that Africans didn't didn't create the social structures which other parts of the world, Europe and Asia, did create, social structures which then helped those other parts of the world to intensify their productivity and uh, innovation and um, expansion and, and so forth. So the follow-on question from that becomes why? Why did Africans develop communalism and egalitarianism on the whole? And why was that the dominant kind of mode in Africa? And whereas in Europe, why did uh, you know why did class class structures come about uh, much earlier than in Africa? Um, and whenever whenever we touch on these kinds of questions, I'm always uh, reminded of uh, this book here, which is written by uh, Sheikh Anta Diop, a Senegalese writer. The book is called The African Origin of Civilization, Myth or Reality. And I've got this book and a uh, very interesting book all about mainly focusing on ancient Egypt or Kemet, talking about supporting the idea that ancient Egypt was an African civilization, as in black people civilization. One of the, one of the most interesting theories that Diop comes up with is has been called the two cradle theory. And this is basically an, a theory he, he came up with to explain the different kinds, what he sees as the, as the two different types of civilizations, the kind of Euro or Eurasian kind of civilizations versus the African civilizations, basically. And uh, so I'm going to read a few excerpts from the book. The book is actually someone, well, quite a few people have actually have gone to have, uh, have scanned the entire book and uploaded it onto the internet, which is uh, handy. So, um, so I'm going to read from the, the relevant sections of this. Let me know what you think. Do you think, do you find these, this theory to be plausible in explaining the differences, between, the perceived differences between African and uh, European civilizations? All right, let's have a look. So he, he writes, the history, of, let me enlarge this first of all. So he writes the, that the history of humanity will remain confused as long as we fail to distinguish between the two early cradles in which nature fashioned the instincts, temperament, habits, and ethical concepts of the two subdivisions before they met each other after a long separation dating back to prehistoric times. The first of those cradles, as we shall see in the chapter on, Greek, on Egypt's contribution, is the Valley of the Nile, from the Great Lakes to the Delta, across the so-called Anglo-Egyptian Sudan. So this is the first cradle, the, the Great Lakes region, uh, Africa. And these are the characteristics he points to. He says, the abundance of vital resources, so that's kind of ref agreeing with what Walter Rodney said about the fact that, you know, in Africa, generally speaking, people had access to land and resources and, you know, there wasn't scarcity really. So the abundle, abundance of vital resources, its sedentary agricultural character, the specific conditions of the valley, will engender in man, that is in the Negro, a gentle, idealistic, peaceful nature, endowed with a spirit of justice and gaiety. All these virtues were more or less indispensable for daily coexistence. On page 112, he continues, because of the requirements of agricultural life, concepts such as matriarchy and totemism, the most perfect social organization and monotheistic religion were born. I'm not going to read this next bit because he has these interesting views with regard to um, circumcision. He basically, he's a big supporter of both male and female circumcision, saying that it reflects this idea that the, the uncreated creator in African cosmology was ambi uh, not ambidextrous, was uh, androgynous. And so circumcision is a, is a sort of way of societies making men and women and, you know, hermaphrodite or something. Anyway, it's, it's a weird, not weird, but it's, it's a, out of the scope of this video for me to talk about that. But so th that's what he says about the African 
the black African kind of a uh, cradle of civilization. So peaceful, abundant resources, uh, uh, you know, justice, gaiety, coexistence. And he also focuses on matriarchy. Again, I'm not going to comment on that too much in this video, but that's something I'll, I'll talk about in another in another video. Then he goes on to talk about. Uh, at the end of this, he goes, he carries on by saying, by contrast, the ferocity of nature in the Eurasian steppes, the barrenness of those regions, the overall circumstances of material conditions, were to create instincts necessary for survival in such an environment. Here, nature left no illusion of kindliness. It was implacable and permitted no negligence. Man must obtain his bread by the sweat of his brow. Above all, in the course of a long, painful existence, he must learn to rely on himself alone, on his own possibilities. He could not indulge in the luxury of believing in a beneficent God who would shower down abundant means of gaining a livelihood. Instead, he would conjure up deities, ma malefic Malficent, God, I don't know how to pronounce that word. It just means bad, evil, <laughs> um, capricious, and so forth, um, and cruel, jealous, and spiteful. Zeus, Yahweh, amongst others, very controversial. In the unrewarding activity that the physical environment imposed on man, there was already implied materialism, anthropomorphism, and the secular spirit. This is how the environment gradually molded these instincts in the men of that region, the Indo-Europeans in particular. All the peoples of the area, whether white or yellow, were instinctively to love conquest because of a desire to escape from those hostile surroundings. The milieu chased them away. They had to leave it or succumb, try to conquer a place in the sun in a more clement nature. I think clement must just mean nice. Invasions would not cease. Once an initial contact with the black world to the south had taught them the existence of a land where the living was easy, summertime, <laughs> riches abundant, technique flourishing. Thus, from 1450 BC until Hitler, from the barbarians of the 4th and 5th centuries to Genghis Khan and the Turks, those invasions from east to west or from north to south continued uninterrupted. The last little bit, last bit here. Man in those regions remained a nomad. He was cruel. The cold climate would engender the worship of fire to remain burning from the fire of Mithras to the flame on the tomb of the unknown soldier under the Arc, Arc de Triomphe and the torches of the ancient and modern Olympics. Nomadism was responsible for cremation. Thus, the ashes of ancestors could be transported in small urns. This custom was perpetuated by the Greeks. The Aryans introduced it to India after 1450, and that explains the cremation of Caesar and of Gandhi in our own epoch. Um, and yeah, so we'll stop there. So it's an interesting, interesting theory. I'm not sure how, how kind of solid I, I find this theory to be honest. But um, you know, it's it's basically an environment. Uh, it's talking about the environment. So it's focusing on the environment, on geography, and looking at the physical environment and saying the this is what has shaped the culture the mindset the, the temperament and so forth of europeans versus africans what do you think about this guys do you think this helps to explain why uh, the europeans were more apparently more kind of conquest focused uh, eurasians i should say were more conquest focused and do you think that then also helps to explain why africans were kind of more Apparently, more peaceful, more chilled out, less less about conquering, more about coexistence and uh, and harmony and so forth. Let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, the name of this channel once again is Africans Arise. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Press the subscribe button. Uh, like this video if you like it. This if you don't like it, press the unlike or dislike button. And again, go to the Facebook page as Africans Arise now, and the Twitter is at Africans Arise. Thank you very much, and I will see you next time.